thanks everyone for joining us. I know it's late in the day, getting a little tired, but I think we've got some really exciting things to show you today about what we're doing with partners to get their technology in front of you, reduce friction, right, and get you more productive with the things that you're building on top of, of uh, Google Cloud. Uh, so my name is Brian Singer. Um, I'm also going to be joined by uh, Anil Dewan. We're both product managers uh, with Google Cloud. Um, and the reason we called the session Standing on the Shoulders of Giants is because we're out there, we're seeing uh, our technology partners and our go-to-market partners building some really incredible things um, on top of GCP and on top of um, uh, G Suite. And we want to make it easier for customers to get their hands on those incredible technologies. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about a couple of offerings that we have uh, that make it easier for you to get partner technology, to purchase partner technology, um, and to use it in the workloads that you're building on top of Google Cloud. Um, so hopefully I don't need to tell you that ISVs provide tremendous value in terms of getting you more productive in the workloads that you're building. We'll go through a couple of examples where ISVs can help you build more secure, more reliable workloads. Um, they can help you improve your architectures overall. There's a tremendous amount of expertise in our technology partners, and we want you to be able to leverage that expertise, right? It's a, it's a great multiplier to what you're doing and to what, to what we're doing with you. We often see customers who have key requirements, right? And you know, maybe Google hasn't built that piece of technology, or maybe it's not something we're, we're going to build, right? And our ISVs are solving those requirements for customers today, but you need to be able to find them. You need to be able to know how you can purchase and deploy those um, in a way that really works with what you're doing on Google Cloud. Um, you also want to build optimized workloads, obviously. So you want architectures that are optimized, that are going to minimize cost, going to minimize the amount of time that your engineers have to spend solving uh, security, security risks, DevOps issues, and so on. Right? And, and our ISV partners are so good at, at building those sorts of technologies for you to leverage. Um, and then finally, uh, a lot of you, obviously, are migrating from on-premise to, to the cloud. Right? It's no secret. And our ISV part, and, and often working with these ISV partners in your on-premise data centers. Um, and we want to make it easier for you to leverage those technologies in the cloud right? with as minimal effort as possible. It should not be a lot of work to migrate to the cloud. And by using things like test drives and Cloud Launcher, right, you can migrate with minimal amount of risk with tried and tested architectures. Uh, so really to sum it up, right, partners help you get to where you want to go faster with less risk and better outcomes. Right? And that's really what we're trying to drive at the end of the day is ROI and better outcomes for your, your companies and your technology. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how you might think about building a solution on top of GCP and how a partner might assist you with that. Um, so pretty common thing that folks use the cloud to do is build a public-facing website, right? And this sort of architecture is no secret. You know, you have instances, they're serving requests through some sort of a, a load balancer. Um, but very soon after you build a website, typically if you're building a website that people know about, right, you're going to have some security concerns, right? You have to secure your data, you have to secure your, your workload. Um, so you start thinking about how, how can I actually go about doing this, right? And, well, we're at a Google conference, so obviously the first thing you're going to do is start Googling. How do I secure my application? How do I secure it against attack? How do I secure it against DDoS? Um, and you're probably going to end up reading a few blogs, finding a few solutions, right? Getting some advice that's out there. Um, but what we found is at the end of the day, uh, you know, often a partner technology, an ISV solution, is going to be the fastest and best option for you to solve a particular issue you might have. All right. So how do you go about finding the right solution and figuring out if it's going to work for you? Well, if you're like me, the first thing you're going to do is see what's out there and, and evaluate it. Right? You're going to see how does this work? What features does it have? Does it run quickly? Right. And in the evaluation, right, you'll probably narrow it down to a few solutions that you're looking at, and then you're going to start testing them. You're going to start testing them with your own workloads, with your own data, in your own environments. Right? And then finally, right, after you've tested it and you've selected a particular vendor, 
you want to get to production. Now, we all know that going from the evaluation to the test to the production phase with, a, with an ISV probably involves some sort of negotiation over pricing and procurement, et cetera, right? That's all friction in terms of building out your particular workload, right? And it, as developers or IT managers, we want to minimize that, right? The promise of the cloud is that we're going to minimize that friction, right? And at Google, we want to help you do that as well. All right. So we see uh, most of our customers sort of going on this path when they're looking at purchasing partner solutions. Right. There's the initial discovery. What solutions are out there that can solve my particular problem? Right. And that's where it's incredibly valuable to go take a test drive. We'll talk a little bit more about what test drives are, but they really solve that problem of, I need to see what's out there and sort of what it does at a high level. I don't want to make a commitment. Right. I probably don't even want to get a phone call right, from a vendor at that point. I don't want to have to integrate with my own tool chain. I don't want to have to start calling up development managers. I just kind of want to see what's out there and see how it works, right? And I, I probably don't have a ton of expertise with these solutions either, All right? The next step, you've probably narrowed it down. You have some solutions that might meet your requirements. You want to run a proof of concept, right? And you want to do that at as low of a cost and sort of some medium amount of commitment as possible, right? You want to see how it works with your particular workload, that solution, how it runs on your particular data, right? What sort of results you get, how fast it is, et cetera. There's some tool chain that might be required, some sort of minimal effort to stand it up, and you're starting to build a little bit of expertise on the solution. Maybe at that point you're actually working with the vendor to find an architecture that's going to work for you. And then finally, right, Hopefully, you select a solution and you want to go to a production deployment, right? And at that point, right, you want it to be simple, but it's also got to integrate with your current tools that you're using for maybe CI, CD, right? It's got to work in your particular environment. You're making a commitment at that point to the solution. You're investing time and resources in configuring it, in making it work with your workload. You're building it into your tool chain, and you're, you're building quite a bit of expertise, right? So it's really a, a journey that you're going through, right, for, for any solution that you select. And we're going to show you how you can make that journey on Google Cloud with as little effort as possible. And it's not surprising, right, we hear from places like IDG, 83% of IT buyers rely on demos, right? You want to see it work. You're not going to take a vendor at face value that a particular solution does what they say it does. Perfect. Um, so I talked about test drives a little bit. So what are they? Test drives are sandbox trial environments provided by GCP technology partners that allow you to rapidly, rapidly try their solutions at absolutely no cost to you. Right? It, you don't even need a GCP account to run a test drive. Right? The partner is taking on all the cost of the infrastructure. Right? They're building out the environment. And the great thing is that the partner is pre-configuring it with data, right? And we'll take a look at what that means, but, but what it means is you're not having to put a ton of effort, right, in this initial evaluation phase. You can rapidly narrow down which solution is going to be the best for your needs. The great thing is that these environments are completely torn down upon completion, right? So you don't need to worry about your data staying up there, someone having access to what you did, and so on, right? So it's a sandbox, it runs for a preset amount of time, and it's torn down upon completion. Um, so we actually launched test drives about a month ago for GCP. Um, we've seen quite a bit of interest from the partner community since then. Um, we, have, we have several test drives available now. We have more that are being added every week. Uh, I'd encourage you to go take a test drive. You can do it now. Right? It's gcp-testdrive.orbitera.com. Uh, you can browse what's available, and you can request test drives you don't see there now. And I'd encourage you, if there's certain solutions you'd like to try that you don't see, you know, go ahead and request it. We're working with the vendors to get more and more test drives stood up uh, on a weekly basis. So how do we do test drives? Um, well, we use Deployment Manager, if you're familiar with Deployment Manager. Um, these are pre-configured templates that the ISV is creating that we provision. Uh, upon request. Once you start the test drive and, and the actual test drive is provisioned, the solution's available to you through web endpoints, right? So we'll take a look at what that actually means in a, in a demo. Um, and then once it's completed, the entire stack is torn down. So we're actually deleting the stack, again, using Deployment Manager. Um, what that means is 
right? Very low effort for you. You can see the entire solution being deployed. You know that it runs, and, the, and you know kind of what the architecture is. All right, so let's take a look at what that actually looks like. And Anil, if you could just come up real quickly uh, so we can flip over. Thank you. Great. So we're now here at the, the test drive landing page, right, where you can see a few of the available test drives. Um, Looker is, a, is an ISV partner that provides a data analytics platform. Uh, so I'm interested in that test drive. I'm going to go here, and I'm asked to create an account or sign in. So creating an account just takes a, a minute, right? Just fill out some basic information, and you have that account available. Um, I did know that we were going to have a demo, so I actually already created an account and actually started the test drive, so we'd have something to show you today. So I'm going to go ahead and sign into my account that I've got. Right. And you can see now that I've started that trial, and that trial is now in progress. Right. We have about four hours remaining right, where I can go and, and test this out. And again, at the end of that trial, it's going to be completely torn down. Right. You can see the URL that this solution is available at, and the, uh, the, the login and the password. So let's go take a look at, at what Looker has made available to me in the test drive. Right. So now we're logging in to Looker. And the great thing is a lot of these uh, ISV partners are putting work in to make it really easy for you to try their solutions, right? So Looker has actually right, given you this landing page. You have supporting documentation, um, certain things that you, know, you can try out in the solution. How do I build a dashboard, right? And let's get some, some basic overviews. In addition to what's available within Looker, right, we actually have within the test drive environment videos that are available for you to look at documentation, a manual, additional resources, as well as a log of what was actually deployed. So you can actually see these solutions getting deployed onto Google Cloud as the test drive is happening. So I'm going to pop back over here into Looker, and you know, let's, uh, let's, see what, let's see what they've got me, what's available for me in this environment. All right. Oh, it's some dashboards. Everybody likes dashboards. Let's see, see what we can find. And you'll see that you know, as, as this loads, what they've done is they've pre-populated it with some sample data, right? So if you want to see how it works, you don't have to go through all the um, effort to hook it up to all your different data sources, right? You can get a quick, quick idea of, you know, is this a solution that is going to solve the particular problem that I have, right? I can see total orders as these, as these load up, sort of brand share of wallet over time, my top purchasers, et cetera, right? And it's not Looker that's slow, it's the, it's the network that we're on. So it slows pretty quickly. Um, so again, there's a variety of solutions that are available today for test drives. We're adding more every week. We want to hear your feedback as to what kinds of solutions you want to see. Um, and you know, we're really excited about sort of what we can make available and what we can do with these partners. Of course, when the test drive's over, I can click the Stop button. And the whole thing is actually torn down at this point. And trial is over. And then very easy if you want to you know, contact the vendor, uh, have the vendor contact you, right? If you have more questions, right, you can do that. Perfect. So can we flip back over to the uh, slides? Great. Thank you. All right, so we want to hear from you. You want to see a solution in test drives? Go to the link. Let us know. Otherwise, feel free to go try out the solutions we have. Um, again, this is a program that we launched about a month ago. Uh, we're really excited about it, and we want to get it into your hands. Um, perfect. So now I'm going to turn things over to Anil, who's going to take you through Cloud Launcher, kind of the next step in that journey where you can actually go and then do the production deployments. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Anil. So as, as Brian showed you, it's, test drives are a great way to uh, kick the tires. You actually don't pay anything, which is pretty brilliant. Um, and it's actually quite a useful resource to, to learn about new software. I'm going to talk to you today about Cloud Launcher, which is our GCP marketplace. And one of the things we think about is how do we accelerate your development through the use of ISV products? And so if you're a developer, what are some of the things that you care about? Well, if you came from the on-prem world into cloud, you already know that you can spend a lot more time coding uh, 
and less plugging in Ethernet cables. But even though you come into cloud, you're still configuring instances, right? If you're trying to create a production level deployment, you're still worrying about firewall rules, making sure that networks can talk to each other, making sure that your SSH keys are managed well, et cetera. So these are still challenges, even though you're in cloud, although it's much better than being in the on-prem world. The next is you're often given a task, like, hey, we're trying to build this new website. Let's go figure out how to build it. And maybe your colleague down the hall is excited about a new language like Node, and you might be a Rails developer, and you might want to get started with that. So trying things out quickly is a very important use case. And you know, w without hand-holding, you can be quite lost. And so it's one of those challenges that we see with developers today. And so when you do find a solution that you're interested in, maybe that Node.js stack that you're just starting to learn about, well, you often want tutorials, and you want getting started guides, and you want to make sure that your journey in using that software is a great one. Because if you're like me, I have very little patience when it comes to configuring and debugging software that I think should just work. So you want to make sure that that experience is great. And once you've taken a solution, you've used it, and you like it, you've tweaked it the way you want, you want to often take that same concept into production. And you don't want to have to restart everything from scratch all over again. You want to be able to do it yourself, and you want to be able to take all of the configuration investment and deploy it straight into production. So that's great if you're a developer. Now, if you're an IT administrator, you're supporting an organization of developers. You, know, you think along somewhat related lines. You're thinking about, how do I standardize the way some third-party software is deployed? Right? I don't want to have one team in one part of my organization running the same piece of software in one pattern and another team, maybe in a different geography, running in a different way. It makes it very difficult to understand uh, security, versions, et cetera. And the next is, how do I reduce cost? And especially in agile IT organizations, how do I make sure my developers are as productive as possible? So this notion of kind of self-service IT, where developers can go find solutions, provision it themselves, without having to bother the IT department for every little thing. And this plays a role in, in kind of two dimensions. One is on the technical side of how do I get infrastructure up and running. But you know, an equal challenge for a lot of organizations is a developer wants to use some third-party piece of software, and they now have to go through a procurement system or uh, get approval from someone even to do a proof of concept. And so this is where uh, marketplaces like Cloud Launcher uh, can fill the gap quite nicely. And so Google Cloud Launcher is our product. It's a, I'd say it's the easiest way to get started with uh, products and services on GCP from third parties. Uh, it's integrated directly inside of our console. I'll show you a demo in a bit. How many of you already use Launcher today or have used it? OK, it's about half of you guys. Um, we have a very sophisticated uh, solution configuration. I think it's one of the biggest differentiators we have in our marketplace uh, compared to other marketplaces out there. And I'll, I'll speak more in a bit about that, especially with a demo. Uh, we have production grid software. So we have amazing vendors. Uh, you've heard some of them uh, in the keynotes from this week. And we're constantly adding more solutions. And one of the nice things about having a central place where you can purchase all the software is, as a GCP customer, you get a unified bill. So if you're, if you're purchasing software through the launcher, it's showing up on your Google bill. So we kind of facilitate that relationship with the ISV. You don't have to work separately with them to get the software up and running. So let's talk about the kinds of solutions we have. We have hundreds and hundreds of products today. Uh, these are just a sampling of some of the major vendors. Uh, you heard about SAP coming on board, uh, I think, in Dan's keynote um, yesterday. Uh, all logos, all, all companies you probably recognize or probably use today. Uh, but in addition to those commercial vendors, we also have a custom program we have at Google called Google Click to Deploy. And what these are is a, uh, a, pa a set of solutions packaged by Google. And they typically are popular open source stacks. And what we've done is we've taken vanilla configurations and we've put them together and pre-deploy them in these packages. So if you want to if you want to create one of these instances, instead of doing it on your own, you can just use one of these. And really, the spirit behind this was our insight in that the moment you start in cloud, one of the first activities you're doing is trying to get a piece of software that you had maybe on-prem up and running. 
And so that journey where you might be trying to configure a Mongo database and you need you know, a cluster and it might have three or four nodes, that might take you several hours to configure simply because you have to make sure that SSH keys are managed well, making sure that IP addresses are transported in config files across each node, making sure you configure the zones correctly. And then if you want to do the same thing in a different zone, well, you have to repeat the whole process. So we, we found an opportunity to simplify that. And we have a set of these Google Click to Deploy packages. They're some of our more popular um, solutions. Since they're pretty much open source vanilla configurations, it's really what you would have done yourself. And uh, they're just community supported. So you can read any blog post on the internet and apply those steps. They just work fine. So next, I'm going to talk to you about the kinds of solutions we have in our launcher. And so there's kind of four types. Uh, the first is uh, virtual machines running on Compute Engine. So these are uh, VM products that run in your account. They launch VM instances, and you get billed for them. So you pay for the infrastructure. Uh, we have several commercial solutions where you're paying, uh, of course, for the infrastructure, but also the license fee for, from, from the commercial vendor. But again, that relationship is kind of done through Google. So you're not having to go out of band and purchase a software and come back and, and try to deploy it. Uh, these, of course, run in your account and uh, supports single and multi-VMs. And I'll give you a demo of that in a bit. Well, sometimes you have an existing relationship with the vendor. Maybe you're coming from on-prem, or maybe you have some custom deal going on with a particular um, company. So in that case, we, we support the BYOL model, which is bring your own license. And in this case, you're still provisioning virtual machines. You're doing it through the launcher, so the configuration is all done for you. You're getting, an in, you're getting a single bill, but the bill is only covering your infrastructure cost. Uh, the, the over-the-top or license fee or usage is done separately through the vendor. But you're still able to get the benefits of Cloud Launcher in sophisticated deployments, easy configuration, et cetera. And these support, of course, single and multi-VM configurations. So that kind of covers Compute Engine VMs. Next is uh, SaaS, so software as a service. So I'm thinking about services like SendGrid. If you wanted to send email, you can come in through Launcher, uh, uh, look at the SendGrid solution, pick a plan, and get a unified build through Google. So we'll hook you up with the API keys. We'll connect you to all the documentation you need to get started, including the SDKs for various languages that you might want to use. But that bill is on your Google bill. Okay? So you don't have to have a separate, again, relationship with the vendor in this case. And last but not least, we have a variant of SaaS where we have um, curated a set of vendors that we think work well with on, on uh, work well with GCP in general, but what we have is a listing only solution. So we provide the ability to discover these vendors, but to actually purchase the solution, you actually work directly with the vendor. So we're not stopping short at just that infrastructure that runs on Google. We're actually connecting you to uh, third parties that we think work well with GCP in general. In this case, you're not going to get an integrated bill from Google. It's going to be independently built from that vendor, um, and you can consume those resources as you desire. So what is Launcher good for? I think it's, you know, we definitely see a lot of folks starting with prototyping. It's probably the fastest way to get started prototyping any new project, any new solution, or as Brian was showing, just trying out new software. So the popular open source stacks, one of the questions we get is, hey, I was going to use some open source piece of software. I see the same thing in Launcher. Why would I use it in Launcher? Why wouldn't I just do it the way I did before? Well, there are several benefits, and I'll walk you through some of the demos. Uh, first is it's probably the easiest way to actually deploy the that software. Uh, we've taken care of all the configuration. We try to try our best to make sure it's secure by default. And any of the options that you might want to tweak, we've actually put in our wizard-like UI instead of having to muck around with config files and read documentation. Uh, so as part of that, when we onboard each vendor, we actually review the settings that are there by default. And we work with the vendors to suggest what are the kinds of options, given different types of workloads, that a user might want to configure. And all of these show up in a UI, which I'll demo in a bit. Next, we're not just stopping sh at getting the infrastructure up and running. We understand that, great, once you have it up and running, you want to understand how to use it. So we make sure that we're tutorials, getting started guides, et cetera, all in a curated place. So you've got one stop shop for everything. So really, it's a low-risk low way to try software. And my favorite point is you can actually apply your free trial credits. How cool is that? And a note on this, this isn't just for the infrastructure. So if you, if you sign up for Google Cloud Platform, we give you about $300 in free trial credits. 
And you can actually apply that $300 even to commercial licensed software via the launcher. And so it's not just the infrastructure. So you can actually use it to apply for, um, for production grade solutions. So speaking of production grade solutions, launcher solutions are also fantastic here. Um, we have multi-VM and enterprise grade solutions we saw with the logos before. We have the BYOL solutions. So if you have custom agreements that you're running in production, um, you can run that same software here. We uh, integrate with support by uh, having a single pane of glass where you can connect directly with the ISV and, and contact their support. So you're not fishing around for who do I contact if something goes wrong. And one of, the, one of the big benefits you get, especially with running open source, is by running it through the launcher or deploying launcher-based solutions, is any time there is a new version of that solution available, or God forbid, there is a security vulnerability in that solution, we work directly with the vendors where they let us know about a change or um, a vulnerability, and we push out notifications to all of our customers who have deployed that product via the launcher. And it's, it's a simple, free, easy benefit you get from deploying the same piece of software that you may have configured yourself. But just by deploying it through Launcher, you're getting some of these great ancillary benefits. Uh, case in point, we send hundreds of emails every year, um, most recently for some of the popular uh, vulnerabilities around uh, MongoDB um, authorization, for example. So really great benefit. It kind of goes unnoticed sometimes. But um, if you deploy through Cloud Launcher, it's just one of those things you get for free. Uh, the next, in terms of running in production, is our integration with Deployment Manager. Uh, Brian mentioned Deployment Manager before. And if, if you're not familiar with Deployment Manager already, it's a cloud service that allows you to describe your infrastructure in a template or a document in a particular um, uh, syntax. We have shown it here as an example. And it's a set of tools uh, integrating the command line, the UI, as well as APIs that allow you to provision that infrastructure that you've described in this declarative document. It's a really popular tool used in CI, CD pipelines, or any production-grade deployments. And one of the things we've done in Cloud Launcher is all of our packaged software virtual machine solutions, they're all built on Deployment Manager. And so why do you care? And what does that even mean? Well, what it allows you to do is get up and running quickly from the UI to deploy this software. But once it's deployed, you can actually use Deployment Manager to then tweak the settings and configuration and actually integrate that same solution into your automation or CI CD pipelines. So it's not just about kicking the tires, it's actually about letting you run this solution in production at scale and not having to adapt your workflows. We can plug right in because uh, Deployment Manager uses G Cloud and supports an API. And so you can deploy directly and even tear down directly from the command line. I'm going to show you some examples in just a moment. So why don't we get started? So if you can switch over to the demo machine. OK. Uh, so let's start here. So I'm logged into our uh, Google Cloud Platform console. And you might be wondering, well, how do I even get to Launcher? Well, there are a couple of ways. Uh, the first kind of more obvious one is uh, right through the menu. Uh, just a few clicks away, you get to the Launcher storefront. And you know, let's go shopping, right? So this is our storefront. You see you can browse a huge catalog of solutions. We've organized them by what we call shelves. So we have various categories like virtual machines, services, OSs, databases, et cetera. Uh, we have hundreds of solutions. So Filtering is really key. So if you're only looking for a particular type of solution, you can just drill in here. If you're looking for, for example, networking solutions, you can see all of them uh, listed here. Uh, we also support robust search. And uh, you know, if you're looking for sending email, for example, and you want to see SendGrid, you can discover it here. Um, we are also, uh, maybe many of you may not know this, but we are also integrated directly into the Cloud Console's search bar, so the unified search bar. So let's say you were building um, some project and you're looking to secure it and you need a firewall. Well, you just type firewall and you not only see, of course, the GCP sections like networking and the firewall rules, but we actually connect you directly to firewall-based solutions in the launcher. So it's just another entry point uh, to help connect you to those solutions. So let's take a look at what it looks like to actually deploy one of these um, pieces of software. So I'm going to choose WordPress, really popular blog. 
and I'm um, going to choose the Spitnami version. I want to sh kind of highlight a few key things that we've done in Launcher to make sure that it's really easy and convenient to deploy the software. So the first is, this is the details page. We're giving you an overview of the product, tell you about the vendor, who you may or may not know about from before. Uh, we also give you a lot of detail about the type of software it is, the version number, et cetera. Um, and for, for most of our package uh, software, con we actually list out the contents. So we actually tell you the version number of dependencies and things that are in there. Uh, one of the most important things you might be thinking about is price. Well, how much does a solution cost? And so we give you the breakdown. And we also tell you about the sustained use discount. And we factor that right in. So you're not left kind of having to recompute and telling your IT organization how much something's going to cost. We give you a pretty accurate estimate right on the details page. Uh, next, even before you deploy the software, we hook you up with uh, tutorials, documentation, um, support, um, and you know, if you want to learn about the different licenses or terms of service, if you need to get that approved in your organization, we list those out here explicitly. So great, so you're going through your journey, you, you, you come across a solution, you're saying, okay, great, I want, to, I want to give it a shot. So you click Launch and Compute Engine, and this is our kind of curated experience that we have, is wizard-like flow that allows you to set really high-level options and let us take care of the actual deployment. So, so what are some of those options you can set here? Well, you might want to change the zone. You might be interested in deploying WordPress in a particular region or zone. Um, if you're familiar with custom machine types, you might be interested in customizing the actual shape of this machine. So we, again, we have smart presets. So uh, most blogs, uh, you know, not seeing a lot of traffic. So we start off with a pretty basic configuration. But if we knew that this blog was going to be pretty beefy, uh, we might want to bump this up to, let's say, a four CPU machine. And if we knew that um, we're going to be more CPU bound than a memory bound, we might bump this lower. And what you'll notice on the side here is as I'm changing these parameters, we're updating the pricing. So, so really, you know, you're not left guessing. We really tell you explicitly as much as we can about what, you, what to expect on your bill. Uh, you can choose you know, a variety of boot disk, if you want SSD or, or regular persistent disk. And when you're done configuring, and again, you, you, most of the times you don't need to tweak any of these options. You can just go straight to deploy. Uh, you would hit deploy. And so this is going to go take you now to Deployment Manager. And this is going to go into our data centers and bring up this WordPress instance. This might take a minute or so. So what I've done um, just before we, we came up on stage is I had actually deployed another WordPress instance. I'm just going to show you what that experience looks like. So here we are. Our WordPress is deployed. And our focus here is to make sure that you can get up and running as quickly as possible. So we show you the IP address of the VM instance that's up and running. We even show you the URL for the admin console. So you can immediately log in and start configuring your WordPress instance. We've generated a temporary password, which you'll change uh, once you log in. And again, but down here, we still have all of that getting started guide, the documentation, et cetera. One of the nice things about GCP is our SSH support. So we have built-in SSH just off of the web. Uh, you don't need to fire up a console. You don't need to configure keys. It's all built in. And all of our Cloud Launcher package software VM solutions um, have this functionality built in as well. So just as a proof to make sure you're not uh, being tricked here, this blog is up and running live. And uh, just as a proof of that, you can see here. And I configured it to say, to say this. So really, just in a matter of minutes, you can get up and running with a blog. Uh, really straightforward. So great. So that's a pretty straightforward um, application of Cloud Launcher. But now let's think about something a little bit more sophisticated. So uh, you know, before I came to Google, I had uh, run a couple of startups, and we were heavy users of MongoDB. And I would tell you that we spent god knows how many hours configuring MongoDB, even in the cloud. Um, because we had a set of replica sets, we needed multi-zone configuration, and it was quite a challenge. So I'm going to show you how you can deploy MongoDB at scale uh, quite easily through the Cloud Launcher. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to search for Mongo. And in this case, I'm going to choose the multi-VM version that we have through Google Click to Deploy. Again, same details apply. In this case, it's telling me a lot about the pricing because we have multiple VMs in this configuration. Uh, including the sustained use discount, which is quite hefty. And so once I decide I like this, you get to this nice UI. And this time, you see different options from our WordPress. This time, I can set up uh, exactly the number of nodes I need. So we have, again, intelligent defaults. So we kind of start with a, uh, a two-node cluster. 
but you might want more depending on your configuration. You can change the machine type for each node. We've pre-configured it to be um, four vCPUs and 26 gigs of memory. Uh, you can change the disk, and of course you can change the size of the disk. Um, and if you've installed MongoDB before, you know it's not just about the nodes that are powering MongoDB. You also need an additional node to scale called an arbiter. But that arbiter isn't doing much. It's just there in case any of the nodes go down so it can kind of do master re-election. So we've kind of programmed that intelligent default into the solution, and you see it here where we have an arbiter. And if you look at the machine type for the Arbiter, it is one of the smallest machines uh, we have. Again, because it's not doing a whole lot of work. It doesn't need a lot of memory. It certainly doesn't need a lot of CPU. And so these are just some of the ways where we've looked at a problem, created an architecture, built intelligent defaults, and allow you to deploy with all of that knowledge just in a few clicks. So I'll go ahead and click Deploy. Um, similar to last time, I've kind of done this uh, before before this, uh, this talk, so I'll show you what that post-deploy screen looks like for MongoDB here. Let's see, it's this one here. Um, again, similar to our WordPress example, but uh, some, some different options this time, right? Here we're talking about how you can connect to the MongoDB primary, uh, link you to documentation and support. So great, so we've seen kind of simple configurations like a WordPress, we've seen a multi-VM configuration like Mongo, but Let's say you're using this MongoDB, and it's a couple months after you deployed it from the launcher. And you say, great, this is working well. I've deployed it in one zone. I now need to deploy it in yet another zone. So how would you do that? Well, so now what I'm going to show you is how you can use Deployment Manager to actually redeploy this same Mongo solution into a different zone with maybe different settings. So what I've done is, in this Deployment Manager UI, I've, I've copied over the Deployment Manager scripts, and they're all listed here. I'm going to show you in my terminal. So I've downloaded them here, and there's just a few files. And I'm going to open up the configuration file. We're going to do this live. And so this is a configuration file that's deployment manager template. And the part I want you to focus on is down here. And these are basically parameters that we can set to uh, configure this Mongo solution. Now, if you're, if you're paying attention, you might realize that a lot of these parameters are the ones that you saw in our user experience. And that's exactly what's going on. Our user experience is really driving these deployment manager templates behind the scenes. And so now we're going under the hood, and we're actually opening up that deployment manager template. And instead of deploying this, um, this MongoDB in the zone US Central 1F, uh, which is what we had before, we're actually going to deploy it in US Central 1A. Uh, I can change other parameters, for example, the number of replicas or the size of the machine. But in this case, uh, I'm happy with just uh, changing the zone. So I'm going to hit Save. And what I'm going to do now is jump to the command line. And using the uh, gcloud command line for, um, for Deployment Manager, all I'm doing is just specifying this file, this mongo.yaml. And I'm telling gcloud Deployment Manager, create a new deployment, call it mongoprodnext. And uh, here's a config file. So I'm going to go ahead and fire that up. And what this is going to do is go behind the scenes, go into our data center, bring up a cluster of three nodes, set up MongoDB, configure all the SSH keys, making sure that each node understands the IP addresses of all the other nodes, set up the arbiter, all that stuff which would typically take you several hours or sometimes even days if you get it right the first time. And it's doing this all behind the scenes. And it's going to deploy it now in a different zone. And so. This might take maybe another 30 seconds or a minute to finish up. But in the meantime, we'll go back to our UI here. Oh, here we go. Actually, it's done. So, so here we go. This is Deploy Manager telling us that it's done in, uh, running our, its script, and those instances are now up and running, and we can use it. So you know, as you can see, the power of Deployment Manager is you can embed this directly into your CI CD pipeline. Um, it's not just for kicking the tires. You can actually run these solutions in production. So let's wrap up some of this demo. Uh, other couple of points I want to tell you about is sometimes these solutions take a while to, to deploy. And uh, you might be impatient if you're like me, you want to get other things done. So we've done a few things. One is whenever you deploy one of these solutions, we actually send you an email notification. And, uh, and we'll let you know that your deployment is ready. And it's not just a notification. We actually, again, connect you to documentation. Our goal here is to make sure that whenever you choose a piece of software and you want to get it up and running, you have everything you need to be successful in doing so. And this is just another example of that. Uh, last but not least, I want to show you what it looks like to purchase 
uh, SaaS solutions. So let's say you are building your application, you've got your Mongo up and running, you've got your app server, and now you need to send emails to, um, to your customers. So you might come in here, again, you might use our global search bar, you might type in email, and you see SendGrid. And so this time we're not deploying any virtual machines, this is a SaaS offering, uh, but this is going to have a, a billing integration with Google. So you just come down here, you get to see all the different plans they have, and uh, once you are happy with it, you can click subscribe, and this shows up again on your Google bill. Um, and beyond that, we have all the uh, tutorials, references for the APIs and different languages all built in, and, and you can be up and running in, in, in no time. So let's switch back to the slides. So just to recap, you know, between Orbiter test drives and Cloud Launcher, Orbiter test drives, great way to try solutions at no cost. You don't have to worry about free trial credits. Uh, you can work directly with the ISV to learn more. Um, Cloud Launcher is a great way to get started uh, on GCP, also run things in production. We're really trying to make it our one-stop shop for products and services in GCP. We've added uh, hundreds of solutions um, over the last couple of years, and we're adding uh, them at a record pace, actually, going forward. So highly suggest you check it out if you haven't seen it before, or if you're an existing user, uh, take a look at all the inventory we've added.